Hi everybody, this is Mr. Nolan, uh, and this is uh, the second of this little two-part series of videos. Uh, in the first one, I first introduced our question, our central question for the unit, uh, how did the bacteria become so resistant? So we looked at uh, Addie Rirachek, who was healthy, and then she got really sick really quick, and that was because of this disease, MRSA, and it's methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So how did that bacteria become that resistant to all those drugs that they tried to use to, to kill it. Uh, again, you can find that video here. It's also in the description to the video, uh, to my, my video on the bottom. Um, what I want to show you is the resource that we're going to use in order to pull up some data uh, about uh, antibiotic uh, resistance so that we can begin to make some informed decisions in, in our investigation. So the data tool is called Resistance Map. <clears throat> the link is right here. This link is also at the uh, in the description to this video. Uh, and the worksheet that I'm going to want you to follow is on my website, which is here. The, dot, the uh, link to this website is also uh, in the description to this video. So both of these are, are down there um, where uh, you can uh, go find those resources. So I'm going to show you how Resistance Map works, but I'm also going to expect you to, uh, you know, download or print out that worksheet if you haven't already, and go through and try to see if you can't actually, you know, find the, uh, uh, you know, the 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 data that I'm asking to look for. By the way, that worksheet looks like this. Uh, it's called Antibiotic Resistance Web Lab, and I'm sort of going to be um, using this kind of to to follow through on on some of the things that I'm going to want you to do with this Resistance Map uh, website. So let me show you what that looks like, and we'll bounce back and forth between this uh, this worksheet. So resistance map. When you first go to this uh, to to the website, it looks like this. So you're going to see this sort of animation, uh, and you know you'll see some maps moving. Well, we want to figure out how do we use this tool to understand antibiotic resistance. So we're going to click on that tab, and that tab is going to take us to a map of the world. So we're going to see this map of the world here. Uh, and so uh, we see there's some options here. We see there's some, some colors. The map is interactive, so you can click on it. If you go down, these are some sort of buttons that we're going to want to interact with. So I'll show you how this all works. So if we follow along with the, what the sheet is asking us to do, we're going to use resistance map to find uh, data on the antibiotic resistance of bacteria. And to start off, after we've gone to our website, we're going to click on antibiotic resistance, which we did. Uh, and we are actually going to compare uh, different antibiotics depending on the bacterium. So we can sort of compare these two and figure out how, re how resistant or how effective are these different antibiotics to different bacteria. So to do that, um, let's make sure we understand what this map is showing us. This map of the world. Right now, if we look over here at the left, we see there is a key. And the darker that things are, the more resistant they are. That's bad. So the darker the color, that means that it's bad. It means that there's a lot of resistance in that area. If we look down here, we can see that we can choose our bacterium. Right now it's for E. coli. We can also choose our antibiotic. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there's a lot of things going on here. Now if we look over here at our worksheet, it's asking us to find the country that has the E. coli with the greatest resistance to amino penicillins. So we're going to look for E. coli, which it's already set to. I could change that. And we're going to look at amino penicillins. So I'm going to go ahead and find amino penicillins. There it is. I'm going to click on it. We see that our map changes. So if I come back up here to my map, remember the darker areas are bad. Those are places where E. coli is resistant. We see, okay, the U.S., we got 55% resistance. South Africa, 84, pretty big. Uh, Thailand, 85. Whoa, India is pretty high. And then Pakistan, if we search around here, Pakistan's pretty much the, the number one, the highest resistance. So that's really bad. So what we would do is here, we would say, well, that's Pakistan, and the percent is 93%, because that's what the map told us. Uh, if I wanted to, let's say, look at number three, find the country that has S. aureus with the greatest resistance to linozolid, I would come over here to resistance map. Let's change my bacterium. Staphylococcus aureus, and it's asking me for linozolid, so I'm going to find linozolid, and wow, Venezuela. It's only 4%, but that's the highest one that we find, so Venezuela would be 4%, and so over here I would say, well, that's Venezuela, and that's 4%, so you kind of see how that works. Um, I can also go and look at trends over time, so if I click on trends, I can see trends for bacteria for multiple different uh, 
antibiotics over time. So I'm actually seeing not just, you know, a map, I'm seeing a timeline. I see a percent and I see multiple antibiotics. And like I said, this is interactive. So this shows you as you move along. This shows you the numbers. So uh, the co different colors are different amino, uh, are different uh, antibiotics. They even highlight. You might be able to see that they sort of highlight as I hold over them. Uh, and we can actually see how they, they have changed over time. We can see that amino penicillins are basically useless by now. They really are not very effective. Um, uh, but these ones down at the bottom are actually very effective because we can see that there's not a lot of resistance. If it's low, if the resistance is low, that's a good thing because it means the bacteria cannot resist it. If the resistance is high, as in the case of amino penicillins, that means that's bad because the bacteria are able to resist that. If we take a few minutes to look at this particular graph, we can see that uh, this light blue one has really risen quickly since 1999 based on current data. Uh, and those are called fluoroquinolones. So those went all the way from 5%, we can kind of see here, all the way to 35%. So they've increased by 30% just in about you know 15 years. So that's a really remarkable uh, increase in resistance. So fluoroquinolones are getting to the point too where they're pretty much not very useful. Uh, and then lastly, I can click on chart. So this will allow me to actually compare different countries depending on which ones I choose. I could actually choose different countries or different uh, regions here. And I can even choose my, my different, uh, you know, uh, antibiotics. So this is also really helpful for us to get a sense that, for instance, India is in a lot of trouble because <coughs> their resistance to antibiotics is very high, uh, almost across the board. I mean, you look at almost anything that's available and it's looking really bad for India. India has got a lot of resistance. And in general, like we saw in the line graph, amino penicillins, this kind of uh, royal blue color, is pretty bad as well. So this kind of gets us started. But what else we can do, and what the worksheet will ask you to do, is to look at, for instance, antibiotic use. Not just how resistant are things, but let's look at our use. So uh, we see that we can go to this map, and it, asks, it will show us the use of antibiotics over the course of 2015. We can see that some countries use more than others. Uh, and we can also look at trends. We can look at the, the, the changes in, in the use of antibiotics. We can see that broad spectrum penicillins is going down. And part of the reason for that is probably because they actually turn out to be less useful over time. Uh, we can see charts as well for antibiotic use. The ones that are going to be really interesting to us is if we jump over to our neck of the woods in the United States, we can start looking at uh, a map of resistance. We can see the central south region is pretty bad. We can look at trends. How are trends changing in the U.S.? Uh, this is east north central, which is, uh, which is where Michigan is. We can look at charts that show the different regions that <coughs> sort of compare these different regions or states. We can also see how much uh, antibiotics are used. And again, this, this, these maps are interactive, so they can show me what states are using our, our uh, antibiotics a lot. Use trends in different regions. And then again, more use charts, uh, where we can actually go to, OK, you know, these are individual states. What are, how are individual states using these antibiotics? So this is really very interesting, uh, and you're going to need to use this in order to complete the worksheet. So if you're at home, if you're trying to follow along at home and do this, um, what I just kind of want to point out is do your best, find the data that you can. If you're confused of whether or not you're finding the right data, just go ahead and do your best. And as always, I have to plug my website. All the important documents in order to be able to start this investigation are here. So if you go to my website, there it is. It's, at the, it's in the description of this video. Just go all the way to the bottom. We are beginning our antibiotic resistance case study, right? So I have our information right here. Um, so you can watch the documentary here. You can look at my PowerPoint there. You can go to the worksheet that I showed you, and you can go to the resistance map link right there. So um, do your best with, with collecting these data, uh, and that way we can have a good discussion in class talking about uh, how did bacteria become antibiotic resistant.